What's up guys? I uh, hope you started the week with a lot of energy and power. Uh, my name is uh, Pepe Cuenca and I am a Spanish Grandmaster and I'm here with you today to analyze the game of the day of the fifth round of the Super Tournament Norway Chess and the game that I want to show you today is the fight that took place between Veselin Topalov, ex-world champion, Bulgarian player and Nils Grandelius, a young Swedish uh, player, both of them uh, very creative and talented and I hope you guys enjoy uh, the game. I think it has many interesting uh, ideas. So let's just start with it. So Topalov decided to go for e4. Nils uh, replies e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Rui Lopez, uh, a Spanish variation, uh, one of the most uh, common lines. And now uh, several possibilities, for example, knight f6, uh, we, we come to the Berlin defense. Uh, it has been seen many times uh, recently in the last years. A6 uh, was played in this game, uh, also mainline. So now uh, again, uh, two main uh, main possibilities. So one is bishop takes c6, the, ex uh, the exchange variation of the Spanish, and bishop a4 that was played in the game. Knight f6, short castles, uh, bishop e7, and now uh, yeah, two uh, main options. One is uh, rookie one. That was not playing in the game and the other one is d3 and actually uh, peter's builder recorded a video series about the uh, d3 so for those who are premium i recommend you to check this uh, d3 uh, against the spanish uh, videos i think it's uh, really interesting and it has many different uh, ideas so uh, now yeah normally uh, black plays d5 d6 or b5 let's uh, try uh, to say what happens after b5 now bishop b3 and after d6, there is a small threat in this position. Uh, it's not that uh, black is going to give you checkmate or do, it's threatening to take uh, one of your pieces, but actually the threat is just to go knight a5. And black would be winning actually the bishop pair if you don't do anything about that because uh, your bishop on b3 cannot move. So that's why after d6, uh, normally uh, white is playing a3 in this position, just giving the a2 square for your little bishop. And now knight a5, you can just go back to a2. And in these types of positions, actually, you don't want to play with c3 and d4. Uh, normally, you want to play with something like knight c3 and then later on install uh, this beautiful knight on d5. So these are uh, different ideas that uh, yeah you don't play uh, in the in the line with rookie one here. So after rookie one, you normally want to go with c3, maybe d4 later, and yeah you uh, barely uh, go with knight c3 and knight d5, right? So after d3 in this uh, position, uh, Nils decided to go for d6. Actually, you are threatening uh, the same. Uh, now you want to go b5 and knight a5. That's why normally you play here c3. Now the c2 square is vacant for your bishop, after b5 you can go directly to c2 even. So uh, short castles was played and now rookie one that has uh, two different purposes. So one of them is just after a uh, many positions you're gonna, you want to go d4. So you need to reinforce a little bit this e4 pawn, right? And also uh, this knight on b1 is a bit sad. And in many cases you want to uh, improve uh, its position via f1. So you want to go knight d2, knight f1 and later knight d3 or knight g3. From g3 you also defend the e4 pawn in case you want to go d4 and you uh, have ideas uh, related to go to f5 where actually uh, attack per perspective to the black king are much more uh, interesting right so uh, here after rookie one uh, yeah many different possibilities one of them uh, is rookie a that actually was played in the game so we'll explain it later the other one is b5 actually uh, you can go here to c2 and then d5 this is another story another line and even uh, knight d7 here is quite interesting, just aiming to go to c5 or b6 in many positions. And after d4, uh, black's idea is just to reply with uh, bishop f6 in, in, in these cases. But okay, rook e8 is also an interesting move. Uh, you want to maybe uh, bring your bishop to f8. Later you can play g6 and bishop g7. You can also uh, prepare with this rook e8, you prepare d5 uh, breaks since the e5 pawn will be weaker. So you need to defend it with rook e8. So uh, now after rook e8, knight bd2 was played. As I told you, we want to go to f1 in many cases. Bishop f8 and now a3. Really natural move as well. Uh, knight f1 was the most played move here in this position, but a3 is really a natural move as well. You avoid these pins with bishop g4. You want to go knight f1, knight g3, and maybe 
in, in some cases you want to play knight h2 and knight g4. This kind of jumps with your beautiful steeds are quite uh, natural in these positions, yeah? So b5 was played, black has to create some counter play on the queen side, and now bishop c2. Maybe after bishop b3, uh, black is kind of winning a tempo with knight a5, and now if you want, don't want to lose the bishop pair, bishop c2, c5, these are uh, black ideas. Uh, you want to expand your pawns here, and then later on, bishop b7, now that you uh, already uh, push your pawn to c5, the knight normally comes to c6. Uh, yeah, so these kind of ideas. And here after bishop c2, actually there was a game, for example, between Karjakin and Ponomario in 2013, where Ponomario played bishop b7 here, and uh, Niels decided to go for knight e7, and according to my database, just uh, one uh, previous game that took place between Garamian and Butronius, if I am able to uh, pronounce that correctly, in 2013, yeah, the idea is as well rather simple. You want to go to g6. It's an uh, interesting square for the knight. You defend the e5 pawn and maybe you can jump to f4 later in some lines, right? And yeah, you also prepare your uh, pawn expansion in the in the queen side. So knight d7, I think it's a really natural and interesting move. Now that the e4 pawn is, uh, is well defended, we are able uh, to play d4. And this is what uh, Topala played. Knight g6. And now knight f1. You never wanna, uh, yeah. You never wanna capture here on e5 because, uh, yeah. Now this is uh, this should be okay for black. Uh, you wanna keep the tension on the center. That's what I mean uh, with white pieces, yeah. And now knight f1. The e4 pawn is well defended. So after e takes c4, c takes e4. We have the rook on c1 and the bishop on c2 defending the e4 the e4 pawn, right? So no problems. And here, yeah. And uh, Niels decided to go for e takes d4. C takes d4, you never want to capture with your knight, for example, you want to keep a strong center, right? So you take with the pawn, c takes d4, and now c5, yeah? This is uh, this was Neil's idea, quite interesting. Now, uh, after this kind of uh, breaks with c5, uh, you normally want to close the center. Let's try to explain why. If you uh, proceed with a normal move like knight g3, probably black's idea is just to take on d4, yeah? And after knight takes e4, bishop b7. I really like here uh, black's position. I think it's pretty dynamic. You have many ideas such as rook c8, for example, uh, queen b6, uh, and uh, d5. If you manage to break uh, in the center with d5, and then uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you 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 don't want to the, to to stay all the game with this uh, pawn on d6. Yeah, so if you manage to exchange it for this e4 pawn, then black's position will be uh, good enough. And you can imagine this beautiful diagonal for this bishop could be amazing, right? So, uh, yeah. So I think that's why uh, white normally closes the center after this c5 breaks of course the end game is nothing for 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 white as well d take and queen takes d8 rook takes d8 yeah there's nothing actually uh, for for white here after e5 just knight d5 is good enough you can play h6 you can play bishop b6 even c4 this three versus two could be uh, really good for for black so yeah this this is nothing as well so that's why toppy decided to close the center with d5 and now uh, knight d7 is a pretty natural move. Now maybe you want to install a knight. Maybe you would love to exchange one pair of knights since uh, black uh, is suffering a bit for, 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 from lack of space. It's always good to exchange a pair of knights. So after knight d7, knight g3, maybe, uh, maybe uh, sorry, uh, Nils uh, played here a5 and maybe this is a bit slow. I think knight g e5, maybe it's a bit more accurate. So now, uh, probably he was a bit afraid of uh, knight h2, because I think knight e5 is just good for black. After knight takes, you could think, okay, what happens after f4? Too much space for, for white, yeah? But I think the, with the knight on d7 here, now black is quite okay. Now that the knight is not on f3, there's not the knight on f3. c4 is quite interesting since, since uh, this uh, knight that was before on f3 cannot come to d4. And then after c4, you can play knight c5, increase uh, the, the pressure on e4. You can also play g6, bishop g7, improving the, the, the position of this bishop. This diagonal is extremely interesting. Yeah, so this is a pretty uh, double-edged position. Uh, it could have been interesting. Maybe knight h2. This is, was uh, the reason why Niels didn't play. Uh, knight e5 here, knight h2, now aiming to go uh, f4, you still have the c4 square, so you can play g6 here, and if white uh, wants to, 
to to kick you back with uh, with f4. He he has to play b3. So now you don't have the c4 square. Let's say bishop g7. Now there is a discover check here. So you have to remove the rook from a1, rook b1, and maybe knight b6, f4, knight d7. Still a uh, pretty double edged position. Uh, I think uh, what has many resources here, uh, sorry, black has many resources here, such as c4, knight c5, as I told you before. Yeah, so this is another story. Instead, he went for a5 here, and now bishop e3, a4, yeah, pushing his pawns here, a 3 versus 2, and bishop d3, a really interesting move from Topalov, and um, his idea is to try to force c4. And then, as he told you, after bishop c2, uh, this uh, beautiful knight can come to d4, and actually you can jump to c6 later, or f5. So, yeah, I think c4 is not a good idea for black. That's why Nils decided to uh, keep the tension playing rook b8, and then not playing c4 yet. Um, after rook b8, bishop f1 was played, knight e5. Uh, finally, Nils Grandelius decided to install a knight on e5. As I told you, could be good to exchange a pair of knights. That's why Topalov just uh, doesn't want to allow this, just played uh, knight d2. Now you want to play maybe f4, and black has to do something about that, of course. You cannot play bishop d7, f4 just wins a piece. But Nils, uh, in a very interesting way, he played bishop e7. And now we could think, okay, what happens? Actually, it's just uh, f4. Actually, after f4, there's a really nice uh, move that is, boom, bishop h4. And actually, uh, black is almost, uh, is, is much better here in this position. You cannot actually take on e5 because bishop takes e3, attacking the rook. When you move the rook, just bishop e5 and then just wins a pawn. Bishop f2, uh, you, you cannot play bishop f2 because uh, the, the f4 pawn is hanging. And you cannot play king g2. That actually could look uh, natural, right? So, But there's a really amazing move here now. Boom! Knight g4, ra -da 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 -da, just wins the game. After h takes e4, bishop takes uh, g3, king takes queen h4. Uh, and after king f3 only move, bishop takes e4, checkmate, yeah? So, this is not a good uh, end for white, yeah? So that's why uh, here in this position, after bishop e7, f4 is not possible yet, right? So, uh, Topalo played b3, it's a really interesting move, asking some questions to Nils, because if he wants to take on uh, a3, uh, now after a takes b3, this uh, a file will be uh, open for, for white and actually this is what happened later in the game. And yeah, if you don't take on b3, actually black uh, white could think on taking on a4. Actually, uh, then Jing was recommending here bishop g5, sacrificing this pawn on, on a4. Let's say b takes, uh, a takes here and then after queen a4. It's clear that actually white is a pawn up. But yeah, there's there's some contemplate related with rook b2, and then you have a pass pawn here, bishop d7, you have some nice squares. So maybe this was an interesting try for Niels. Okay, instead he played the most uh, human move, a takes b3, and then after a takes b3, now uh, he went for bishop g5. This is an interesting move, this bishop here on a7 is worse than the bishop on e3, and then you will gain some control over the dash squares. But uh, I think Topalo uh, handled pretty well uh, from here. He played here the move knight h5, actually uh, controlling the f4 square, and actually now you are uh, threatening to go f4. That's why you are kind of forcing uh, uh, black to take on e3, bishop takes e3, rook takes e3, and here uh, I think uh, one of the first uh, inaccuracies of the game from Nils Grandelius, he went knight d7, maybe this is too passive, Maybe queen f5 or f5 were, were more interesting. Let's say queen g5, sorry. It's not that easy for, for white to manage to play f4, yeah? So what could think, okay, g3 and then what's going on here? So now white is going to play f4 and then I'm just losing, right? So no, there's an amazing move here again, bishop g4. Wow, and black is uh, better, <laughs> incredibly. After h takes e4, knight takes e4, now this uh, knight uh, on h5 is really sad. And if you move your knight, actually you take on e3 and then on g3, and black is much better. You cannot even move your knight to f4. But uh, yeah, black is much better after this bishop g4. And then after something like rook g3, you can just go to h4. So this was a really interesting try for Nils Grandelis as well. Instead, he went for knight d7. Maybe he wants to go to, to, to e5 with his rook, as he did in the game. So uh, now Topalov activated his rook, playing rook a7, really interesting move. Now uh, the, this square on a1 is extremely interesting for, for the queen. 
because look at this uh, G7 pawn. Now you put in a lot, a lot of pressure there. So uh, Niels uh, decided to go for a uh, rook e5. Now you cannot move the queen to a1, but uh, Topalo played bishop e2. Really uh, good move, just defending this knight on h5. And now you want to go queen to a1, of course, and then f4 later. And this looks actually pretty, pretty dangerous for Black, right? So after bishop e2, knight d f8 was played and queen a1. And actually f4 now is a threat. If you manage to play f4 now, actually you just win the game. So Black has to do something about that. He went for uh, queen h4. Now you want to take on h5, of course. g3 cannot be played since uh, queen h3 is coming. So in this position, actually uh, white is forced to go back to g3. And now knight f3 is a threat. That's why Niels uh, had to go back to e to d8. And uh, Topalo improving step by step his position, bishop g4. Now you want to gain control over the f5 square. Let's say when you exchange this uh, pair of bishops, now knight f5 uh, could be a possibility. So uh, Niels again played in a really natural way, just uh, removing active, active uh, white pieces. Yeah, the rook on a7. But here from, from this point, actually, Topalov put a lot of pressure on Niels. Uh, he played very precisely. He took on e7, knight takes e7, he took on c8, rook takes e8, and now knight h5. And then the, this sequence is uh, pretty forced. Now only move to defend the checkmate is just f6, right? Uh, what followed it was rook g3. Now uh, the only move is just to put a knight in between the rook and the pawn. g7, g6 cannot be played uh, since f6 is hanging. Yeah. So he went for knight e g6. I think it's more natural than the other knight because with this knight you also cover the uh, e6 square. And again, another uh, good move, queen a6, putting a lot of pressure. To now you want to take this pawn on b5. B4 is actually not a good idea because the C4 square is vacant for this knight and then D6 is extremely weak, right? So it's not that easy to play here. After seeing what happened in the game, maybe it was better just to sacrifice the B5 pawn, rook A8, and after queen takes B5, rook A7, just defend this G7 pawn. Because after the most natural move, queen D7, F4 uh, came in the game and actually F5 is just coming and then if white manages to play F5 and then uh, you cannot remove your knight from G6 since uh, G7 is gonna fall yeah and yeah with a lot of pain with a lot of pain for Niels so uh, here for, at this point yeah the position is extremely complicated so uh, F5 is not even possible you can just take on F5 queen takes F5 and now rook G5 this queen has to put an eye on the rook on c8. That's why queen d7 is solely move. And now knight e4, really strong move. Not only attacking the d6 pawn, but also threatening to go just knight f6, just winning the queen. So this position is extremely complicated for black. So after f4, uh, Niels decided to try to complicate the game to uh, with c4. But just after d b takes e4, b takes e4, knight takes c4. Uh, we collected one pawn, this was really tasty, and uh, we are attacking d6, we are threatening to go f5, yeah, not a good business for black, so f5 was played, knight takes e6, and then rook c1 check, we have this beautiful square, h2 for our king, some fresher, and now f takes e4, f5, you cannot remove your knight from here, knight f6 is coming, so e3 was played, and after f takes, h takes, knight just uh, uh, to f4, actually Nils had to resign. This point, this point is going nowhere and yeah, we just uh, a piece up, yeah? So really interesting game uh, from both sides. I think uh, both players, uh, yeah, played in a really interesting way. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the game as much as I did. And this has been uh, everything for today. Hope you have an amazing starting uh, week. And just uh, have fun and take care, yeah? And see you next time. Bye-bye.